brings you the best highlights, scores, and matchups from your favorite Centinella Valley schools. Lawndale losing or Hawthorne, we've got them all. Back with another exciting show for you, I'm Karen Bright. Halfway through league now, we go straight to beast mode with the Lawndale Cardinals on the road against Culver City. The Cards held nothing back against the 8-15 Centaurs, blowing them out 90-46, winning by 78 points total in their last two games since losing the Ocean League's top spot in their one-point loss to Beverly Hills last week. Now let's take a look at two featured contests that turned out a lot different than most people expected and had fans on the edge of their seats till the last minute. We start at Lou House, Lou Zinger hosting Centennial. Responsibility fell on this guy, Darian Williams, to lead as two top Olympians were sidelined. Sophomore Devin Newton with a knee injury, Mookie Carr battling the flu. The Apaches on a nine-game skid looking to shake things up, on the board first, keeping losing or scoreless for the first two, jumping out with the early lead. Christian Odionu helps close the gap, and by the second quarters, the Olympians pull ahead. In the second quarter, this new-look losing or team starts to gel, but at the half, it's Centennial with the 18-16 lead. Third quarter now, Williams goes up for two. These teams are going bucket for bucket, and the gym is going wild. Through persistence, though, the Apaches break open the game late in the third, up 35-27. Benson drops a bomb, but Losinger's effort isn't enough. The Centennial Apaches notch their first win of 2015, beating Losinger 59-47. To Hawthorne now, a Cougars victory would be a tall order against visiting Santa Monica. Intimidation not a factor off the start, though. Underneath to Davion Lee for the first two of the game, Blackwell from long range doubles Hawthorne's lead, and that would be the Vikings' wake-up call. Samo's Jonah Matthews sinks three for the lead to end the first, and Vikings' big man Jace Johnson uses all seven feet on D, then makes it down court in time to finish the job. A scrappy Hawthorne team keeps it close, down 19-16 at the half. Third quarter, Hawthorne transfer Cesar Arazo makes it personal, scoring nine points right off the bat. Then it was time for the Markel Gray Show. The Cougars down five, Markel hits two pressure free throws, then ties the game at 43 and 45. But that's not all. He maxes out on defense too. It wasn't enough though. The Vikings, minus starter and Auburn commit New Williams, find their rhythm and win it 61-51. We have a whole lot more Ocean League action for you tonight as the number two Lawndale Cardinals will try to avenge their weekend loss to Price. They hit the road to take on the number three Santa Monica Vikings, the Cougars. Stay at home in the Seahouse trying to snap a three-game losing streak, but make it even harder than last week as they host number one Beverly Hills. Next up, the Pioneer League's premier losing Olympians try to break 500 and hold on to their number one rank as they host number three Torrance Tartars. Will we see the return of sophomore Devin Newton or Will the Olympians have to try to make their adjusted roster work for another week? We'll find out. Let's throw it down to the court. Lou, take it away. All right, thank you very much, Karen Bright. It is the game of the week. Pioneer League action on the line. Losingers Olympians welcoming in the Tartars of Torrance. And this should be a really good game because it was a one-point affair back at Torrance. It definitely was. Losinger came out on top. On the road, they're here at home tonight expecting to put on a little better show. They've got everybody healthy except for Devin Newton, of course, still out with the uh, sprained ACL. They'll get an MRI to see exactly what the extent of that injury is. And that's on his left leg, and these Tartars are led by Coach Paul Nitaki. He, uh, his assistant coach is his little brother and his dad. Exactly. So it's a family affair, as they say. They've got a tall order, though, but they've got some players. They'll, we'll see their motion offense, and uh, their, their key player is number four, Giovanni, and we'll see what they can do. They're expecting a good matchup. They acknowledge that Luziger is a little more athletic than they are, but they're a scrappy, hustling bunch, and they expect to create trouble for the Olympians. Coach Nakaki said that uh, the Olympians killed them on the offensive glass, and that was the difference in the ball game. And then talking to Ali Pervaz, he says, well, we blew an eight-point lead coming out of halftime. Exactly. And, of course, they expect to rectify that tonight and give Luziger a lot of credit. They had a big, come, a big bounce back win, if you will, against West a couple of nights ago after having really taken a drubbing against uh, Centennial in a game they were expected to win. But that was their first time out without Devin Newton. 
and they really struggled at the point guard. It'll be point guard by committee tonight. A couple of guys, Kevon Fair, Godslaw, and even Miner will get their opportunity to run this losing our offense and to see if they can get the ball to the big guys. That's Mookie Carr and Christian Odeonu. That's right, and Eric Campos getting the start tonight. Five and one, a little, still a little surprising that the Olympians are atop the Pioneer League in their first time out. They're, they're atop the league and have the opportunity to control their destiny the rest of the way. Uh, South is in second place at four and two, but right now all they've got to do is keep winning. They keep winning. Title is theirs. All right, we'll have the opening tip-off coming up next. Hi, I'm Donnell Beverly from the University of Connecticut, home of the 2011 National Championship UConn Huskies basketball team, and your losing your Olympians. Beverly around the back, follow a jumper, good, beautiful shot. It wasn't too long ago that I was playing basketball right here. I just want to thank him for having me here. I'm, I'm honored to play here. And the Huskies are the top dog in 2011. Winning the NCAA championship has always been a goal of mine, but so is getting a great education that will last me a lifetime. You can achieve your goals too. All you have to do is work hard and dream hard, and you can do anything you put your mind to. Back here at Lou House, and the Torrance Tardars are being introduced. Number four, Giovanni Jackson, and there's number 12, Devin Kaltoff. And number 14, Kusha Modanlu. Number 15, or excuse me, number 35, Evan Mejia. And number 44, Kevin Gonzalez. The Tartars are 10 and 12, 3 and 3, tied for third in the Pioneer League, have won one in a row, and are 4 and 1 on the road, Rufus. They're coached by Paul Nikita. His brother Mark and dad Mike are the assistant coaches. Now for the Losinger Olympians, we'll have a little bit of a new look for them tonight as a senior will be starting at guard. Number zero, Eric Campos. At the other guard, number two, a 5'10 junior, Davion Crowder. One of the forwards, number 10, a 6'3 junior, number 10, Darian Williams. In the middle, or at one other forward, 6'4 senior, Chris Odionu. In the middle, it'll be number 33, the captain of the team. The 6'3 senior, 6'5 senior, excuse me, Devante Muki Carr. The head coach of the Olympians is Ali Pervaz in his fifth year, 88 and 55. His assistants are Robbie Rhodes, Charlie Schreier, and Terry Autry. And other than Newton being out with the injury that we talked about, everybody else is healthy tonight, which is the first time in a long time that this losing their squad has been healthy and ready to roll. So this will be an interesting game to see how the Olympians can get along without Newton, although they did overcome the West Warriors 48 to 4 in a, in a low scoring match for them as the Olympians average 54 points a game, as do the Tartars, just over 54 points. And it's going to be a battle of the defense, a disciplined defense and, we'll see, uh, by, uh, and offense by the Tartars against sometimes the uh, wandering eyes of the Olympians. Exactly, but I think the Olympians tonight, again, come in focused, they've gotten their stride back. The Centennial loss knocked them off their stride a little bit, but they got it back against the West. I think you can expect to see a good performance from them tonight. Odionu will jump for the ball with Devin Kaltoff, and the Olympians retain possession. Mookie has it. Now over to Odeonu. Campos gets it to Williams, drives in, puts up a shot, won't go down, rebound is to Carr. Kind of it goes, it won't go. 
But who are our officials tonight? Our officials tonight, Lou, a veteran crew, uh, Eric McNeil and Lance Reed. The always affable Lance Reed. That's right. First foul is on Kevin Gonzalez. First personal, first team foul. Mookie misses the first one. Mook is just a 47% foul shooter, and there you see Paul Nikita in the sweater vest for the Tartars. Makes the first one. And it's 1 0 Olympians. Bringing the ball across is Modianlu. And Modianlu. Jackson. He's their leading scorer and their best athlete. A little bit of a shuffle for Akosha. Takes the shot and the rebound uncontested to Darian Williams. Losinger came out in that defensive set showing a man to man defense. And Mookie Carr with the follow. So a nice rebound put back, and here comes Kosha, Modan Lu, and blocked away by Odionu. Here comes Campos, gets the ball back. For Odionu, he's averaging about a block and a half a game. Nice pass down to Williams, and nice little shot from the baseline. And what the key is, Lou, is that Williams, the last time when we saw him against Centennial, was forced into some of the ball handling responsibilities. It, was, it took him out of his natural game. You saw him on that play there. That's Vintage Williams right there. A nice pump fake by Devin Kaltoff, and he goes in and makes the layup. So that breaks the 5-2 run. 6.20 left to go in the first half. Glad you joined us on City TV. Williams out to Carr. Off the glass. So Mookie started out strong. He's got five points here in the first two minutes of the game. Jackson with it, gets it over to Kaltoff. And Jackson against Williams. Kind of a double screen, but the shot is blocked by Odionu. Over to Williams against Jackson. Right. And we got a foul. And the foul's gonna go against Jackson, if you're not mistaken. Jackson trying to give ground and stay out of the way, but Williams did an excellent job of drawing the contact, and that's what we see as the indication from the official, Eric McNeil. And you're saying that uh, his son Eric played for the UCLA Bruins football team early on in this century, for the, back what, around 2000? 2002 to 2006. So I missed him by a few years over there. And his dad looks like he could get on the football field today <laughs> if he wanted to. That's right. Williams missed both free throws. And he's just a 40%, 46% foul shooter. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be losing her ball. So the McNeils, actually Eric McNeil, works with his dad now in the oil fields. Campos fires up a three off the mark. Rebound is tipped and taken by Gonzalez. Gets it to Jackson. Now back to Gonzalez, and wow. he drains the three. Check that. That's Evan Mejia. And it was a wide open look for Mejia. Our score now 7 5, five and a half left here in the first quarter. Puts him right back in the ball game. Crowder with the three, trying to answer. Can't get it to go down. Rebound is off to Calta, and that's what was Coach Nakati said, we're more of an outside shooting team. Well, they have to be because they don't have a lot of length, and there you wow. see why. And that's Giovanni an Jackson with his first bucket. And that was a three-pointer by Jackson, so it gives the Totters their first lead of the game at eight to seven. Williams trying to get something going, gets it to Crowder, now gets it back. Zone defense being shown by the Tardars now. Underneath, a no-look pass, and that's what happens sometimes. Turnover to the Olympians, and a pass back, and a nice bucket by Modenlu, his first of the game. And it's a three-point lead for the Tartars. So after trailing by a margin of 5 nothing, they've reeled off a 10-2 run of their own. 
Jump ball on the play. Possession arrow favors the Totters. Now coming in, their tallest kid, and he's just a sophomore, Thomas Wilson, in the ball game for Kevin Gonzalez. Wilson pretty thickly built, a space eater on the inside. We'll see how his engine runs when he has to get out and, and transition these guys. Oh, and they're going to wave that basket off. Darren Williams went up, touched it on the rim, Lou. That one looked like it may have had a chance of going in. It sure did. There you see the block by Carr. Javante with almost two blocks a game, and there you see the play. So going to the line for two is Crowder. Didn't see who the foul was on. And you get a shot at that replay again, we'll definitely see it was the guy who contested. I agree with that, didn't There it is, number 14. Number 14, Kosha Modianu. Or Modanlu. I'll get it right by the end of the broadcast. Right. That's his first personal. Jackson with it. Modanlu now gets it back. Shot taken by Kalka, and that's a long two pointer from the right side. He has four. And this is a good shooting uh, Torres Tartar team. As you can see here in the early going, they obviously shoot a very high percentage. In the ball game is Kavon Fair, and he misses a shot. Rebound now to Modenlu. And did he travel? Travel. Yep. First turnover on Torrance. And there you see, put both hands and shuffled the feet. So Darian Williams going to have to have a big game tonight, as is that young man, Davion Crowder. Down underneath, and both Olympians went the opposite way of the ball. They turned it over. They think that Torrance got tipped the ball. Officials don't agree, and so we come the other direction. Looked pretty straight on to me. So Jackson, now to Kaltoff, one of the captains on, captains on this Tartar team. And ball is tipped away. Here comes Fair, back to a uh, nice wow. shot, but uh, Crowder can't make it go down. Because maybe Fair should have tried to force the issue. Rebound put up, no. And here comes Welcome, and Wilson, no. Nice spin move by Gonzalez to get the offensive rebound. Kaltoff with a... Alley-oop, wouldn't go down. 2.45 left, here's an alley-oop, but Odeonu missed that one. Yep, they, they gave it the old college try. It didn't work out for him, though. And on that shot, that could have been a backbreak if Jackson had been able to knock that one down. Williams comes up with the rebound and slows it down. Trying to get something going. Ball down to Odeonu. Nice long arm, nope, won't go down. Rebound is chased down by Jackson. Jackson doesn't have the numbers, and it's swatted away by Williams, and it was last touched by Jackson. And Jackson chose to attack rather than perhaps pull it out, actually losing her head, defensive numbers on him, and a good play by Darian Williams. That was a terrific play. Sitting down now is Odeonu. In the ball game is Nathaniel Vaughn. Wonder how he did in that football all-star game a couple weeks back. We'll have to put our intrepid reporter on that. <laughs> Karen Bright is with us, hustling over from the studio to the sideline. Right. Williams for three. Looks good. Nope, just short. Rebound to Carr. He is the garbage man tonight. Gotta love a guy like that that's gonna yeah. get his hands dirty. And, and, and what he's showing, excuse me, is, is, is that losing her needs to go inside more. They're selling for a lot of jumpers that they aren't having a lot of success on. Their success is coming from the inside. Oscar Perron in the ball game, as is Kyle Polk. Two guys that Coach Nishida is, or Nataki is looking to count on. Ball's tipped out of bounds. Coming in the ball game is Sean Temple, Sean making Temple. a rare appearance. That's right, that's why we had to try to find him on our roster. 
Wilson gets the inbound pass. Now Gonzalez drives, gets it back to Wilson, puts it up, no. And he falls down like a tree in the forest. And the losing your Olympians will get possession on the tie-up. And Wilson definitely a player who, who's still in development. Just a sophomore, as you mentioned, you know, having the opportunity to play here on varsity talent level. Not quite there yet, but he's got a couple of years to go. You know what? He looks like he can take a licking and keep on ticking down low. Long shot by Temple, won't go down. Rebound is off to the Tartars with 107 left to go in the first quarter. Gonzalez for three, that's going to be long. Rebound is off, taken by Fair. Long outlet yeah, pass, yeah, and yeah, Williams was shoved yeah, by Gonzalez. Yeah. Great work by the official. Evans first, fourth team foul, and it'll be out of bounds. Shan Temple just to our left. There you see coming in the ball game is Devin Kaltoff again, back in the game. 3-2 zone by Torrance. Dumps it down to Mookie, back out to Fair for three, a little short. Rebound goes to Parada. And as long as losing your shoots like that from the outside, they're going to they're keep running that zone at him. Great basket there by Giovanni Jackson as he goes the length of the floor. He just went coast to coast. Now Fair has it. So you think the Olympians have to try to do a little bit better job of penetrating the zone? I, I think they do. I, I, well, clearly, because the, their outside shot is not working. I mean, they're shooting a very low percentage from the field. Their points have come in the paint. Five seconds on the shot clock. Fair's going to have to shoot, or Temple, that is. Yeah. Gets it to go down. He says, oh, yeah, Rufus, watch this. <laughs> And that ends the first quarter of play and gets the, the Olympians back in this, just one point down, not that they were out of it. No, but it was a bit surprising that uh, Torrance put together that huge run after they trail 5-0 in the early going. They put together a 10-2 run. Looks like we got Karen Bright ready. Let's go to Karen. Lou, Rufus, Losinger may have the size advantage, but this Torrance team is a very tough opponent for them, according to Coach Parvaz. I asked him if, how the team was doing, gelling, you know, now that Devin Newton's still on the sideline. He told me it's a work in progress, but they're using players like Kayvon Fair and like Eric Campos to try to alleviate the pressure on Darian, try to give him a little more to work with on the court and hopefully make it work a little better. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you, Karen. A 10 to 1 run by the Tartars is what got it going, uh, led by two three pointers, one by Giovanni Jackson, the other by Evan Mejia. Kind of back to back, I do believe. And uh, the leading score for the Olympians None other is than the Mook. Mookie Carr with seven points. And an interesting footnote, Lou, to that first quarter for the Olympians, they did not commit. One team foul. That's right. That is good news for the Olympians. Shot wild off of Katoff. Kaltoff, but I believe he's going to go to the line to shoot two. Foul is on Williams. Yeah, they Broadcasters jinx. Yeah, that work again. <laughs> and at the half, we may check that foul situation on Gonzalez. They only had four, and I had them with two of them. Jackson with one, Mondaloo with one, and Gonzalez with a pair. Kaltoff misses the first one. Now let's see, I've got Jackson, Mondaloo, Mejia and Gonzalez okay. with one each. Well, and you know what? Mejia and Gonzalez are right next to each other on the on the score sheet. So you're probably right. Three-point shot by Temple. And my grandfather said I may not always be right, but I'm never wrong. <laughs> there Jackson. You go. And we're gonna get Jackson the ball with a ball over. handling uh, violation. 
three turnovers on the Tartars. 718 left to go in the first half. But we will check those numbers. Wow, a lot we... of hand checking there on Williams. That, of course, is a point of emphasis this year that the defender cannot keep a hand on the ball handler. And we see it again. Sooner or later, that one's going to get popped by one of the officials. Carr Her passes it back out. It's tipped and stolen away. Back come the Tartars. Try to extend their lead. Gonzalez has it. This Torrance team is a quick dribbling team. Good ball handlers. Jackson from beyond the free throw line. Rebound, offensive rebound by Modemlu. But the Olympians come back after that miss. Good defense by Mookie Carl on that play. Kept his body on top of the play in a second consecutive turnover by the Olympians. That was just a bad pass. And the Tartars really want to do some revenge. That's a good pass underneath the Modenlu. And he just puts it up and in and gets around Mookie. Four points for Kosha. And one aspect of the game in Torrance that Coach Nataki was telling us is that they killed this the third straight turnover by wow. the Olympians. Five on the game. So in the first two minutes here in the second quarter, they've already lost three possessions to turnovers. Sitting down is Shan Temple. In the ball game is Peter Godslaw, who had a good good game against Centennial. And also in the ball game, well, we mentioned Nathaniel Vaughn, Joseph Benson in the ball game as well. Benton we've seen be a spark plug offensively for him. He's gonna have a challenge defensively as he's trying to guard Evan Mejia. Here comes Vaughn, so he's got the steal and the layup. Good to see Nathaniel put something up there, get something going. And that ball goes out of bounds. Good defense by Godslaw. And Jackson with the one foul, a heady ball player, decides, you know what, we got a lot of basketball time to go. Better me to give the basket than to pick up my second foul here with so much time left in the third, second quarter, which probably would have sent him to the bench. Kosha Modenlu sits down, and back in is Wilson. 5.25 left to go in the second half. Odeonu back in the ball game for the Olympians. Air ball, now Nathaniel Vaughn loses the ball to Parada. Swatted away by Williams on the coast to coast try. Odeonu trying to get around yep. the defense, but good defense by Kaltoff. Odeonu gets it back, passes it away. That's your fourth turnover here in the second quarter. Gonzalez misses. Whoa. Williams gets whacked by an inadvertent elbow. But the foul is going to be on Number Devin Kaltoff. Fifth team foul. And the first personal on Devin. There you see it there. Didn't mean it. Devin might have a nice little goose egg later on. Well, Kaltoff is like, I didn't hit him that hard now. Whoa. And sometimes when it's in that soft part of your noggin, you feel it a little more. Gonzalez almost threw it away, but Jackson's there to save it. Kaltoff. Now, now we mentioned again against Benton that we're going we're gonna to get a hand checking foul against Joe. That's his first, only the second team foul. And Mookie comes back in. Let's Somebody's see. got to come off. Or did somebody already come so, off? Somebody came off where we could see who it was. Whoa. Well, okay. Odeon is probably going to get called for that one against Gonzalez. Yep. Chris's first personal third team foul. And that one could have gone any, either way, actually. Parada with it against Odeonu. Kaltoff being guarded by Godslaw. Ball is loose. 
Gonzalez has it, trying to be tied up, but gets it away. The car with it. Now here comes Odiona with it. Look Whoa. out! He misses the slam dunk. It's good defense by Kaltoff. Jackson almost traveled with it. And an air ball by Parada. Rebound is flicked out of bounds by Wilson. And 3.53 left to go in the second quarter. Williams will take a seat. Far, a fair comes back in. Out of the ball game is Gonzalez for the Tartars. And in is Kyle Polk back in the game. So it looks like Coach Nataki will go eight deep. Rebound is tipped out and back to the Olympians as Godslaw has it. Gets it back from Odeonu. Benson, their three-point specialist. Teams are guarding him extra special these days. They've got to flash both big men, although that three goes up and in for Kayvon Thayer. Big bucket for the Olympians to give them their first lead in a while in 18-16. Last time they led was 10 to 12. Excuse me, 12 to 8. That bucket goes in, it's tied up again. And did you see who got that one? Actually, I didn't. I don't know. Shot taken by Odeonu, off the mark. Rebound is saved by Fair. And we have a loose ball foul on that? Yep. Kosha Modemlu, his second, sixth team foul. Odeonu out of the ball game for the Olympians. Williams back in. So the loose ball foul means no foul shot. 2.46 left in the half. Fair wanted to take the three. Now Godslaw with it. Trying to set up the play. On a flex zone defense. Williams. Gets a screen from Vaughn. Godslaw going against Welsom. Too far. And the rebound's put up. No, Welsom comes down with it. Mookie battling inside. Couldn't get it to go. And that's what I was talking about. Welsom is a big guy. He eats up a lot of space in there. Three-pointer put up and in by Kyle Polk. It gives the lead back and another long shot. I believe that was by Darren Williams. Williams. Yep. He has four. So the Tartars and the Olympians putting on another tight battle just like they did across the 405 in Torrance back on January 16th. Wilson had to hurry up his shot. Rebound won't go down and whoa, look out. Fair and Wilson jump ball possession arrow favors the Olympians. So the sophomore playing tough, hanging tough, and why not? He has a size advantage, tall and wide. Godslock sitting down. Coming back in is Davion Crowder. Parada back in the ball game for the Tartars with 125 left in the half. Williams to Carr. Back to Williams for three. Off the mark, rebound taken by Kaltoff. And the Olympians are definitely getting out rebounded tonight. Well, Give and go. Long shots equal long rebounds. Parada. Williams comes up with it. Right. Under a minute left to go in the half. Down underneath, back out to Fair. Quick defense by Torrance, trying to grind down some clock, and Fair rolls it in. A half a dozen for Kayvon. And the Olympians get the lead back with 30 seconds left to go in the half. Kaltoff. 
Down to Modenlu, underneath the Wilson. Easy bucket for him. And he finally gets one on the inside. Ties up the game at 23. Shot clock is dark, coming down to 10 seconds. Mark. So a timeout, Ali Pervaz is almost at half court, calling for a timeout. Finally, it's called by Eric McNeil with 6.7 seconds left. Well, a very, very tightly contested game here. Again, as you see, a couple of the stars of yesteryear. Russell Westbrook, now, of course, with uh, Oklahoma City and Kelsey Bars, who left us much too soon. But we got Karen Bright. Guys, I talked to Coach Paul Nataki before the game, asking him what his team's biggest strengths were. He said that their strength is that they don't just have one go-to guy. Everyone on that squad is capable of making the shot. So all they have to do is create the open space, and they should have the game go their way. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Karen. And Coach Pervaz drawing up one last play for the half. One last play, you know, when you burn a timeout, as precious as they are, you only get five. <laughs> you sure hope that play works exactly the way you drew it up. So let's see what happens. We got 6.7 left. Now we've got Okay. So all right, so we got a technical foul being called against an administrative technical, which is going to be two free throws plus the ball because number 55, that's Wilson. I guess Wilson wasn't in the book. And stepping to the line to make the team is Davion Crowder. All right, and that gives the Olympians the lead by two points. So is that on the bench or is that on uh, the, the Zeko on Wilson? Well, no, it doesn't. It, it's, it's an administrative technical because it wasn't in the book. It's an indirect for the coach, and they've got a chance here to add to that. It really does, boy. No, that came after the horn. But give Darren Williams the basket there. So in the last 6.7 seconds, Lou, losing her because of the technical foul is able to reel off four points and to take a 27-23 lead. As you see, Crowder leaning into the basket there. Well, let's go now to Karen. Coach, game is close after the first half. How do you feel so far about the game? I, I think we're getting some great looks on offense. Um, you know, we got Kayvon and, uh, and Sean in there, some of our shooters that could probably break that zone a little bit. Giving our open it up for our other guys. We just got to get better transition defense. I feel like every week you're here, and every week I'm saying we got to get better transition defense. We're giving them easy looks on the other end. We just got to make them work a little harder. As far as rebounds go, though, they're definitely looking sharper on that. How do you feel they're doing that way? Absolutely. That's one of the things I challenged the boys with was to get on the boards, and I thought they did a really good job. Darian Mookie did a good job, and our guards are getting in there and rebounding too. It's very important for us to keep that up in the second half. Thanks, coach. Back to you guys. All right, thank you very much, Karen. And, uh, well, a little bit of encouragement from Coach Parvaz. Absolutely, and they had a nice spurt there at the end. And as he said, what they're looking to do is to, is to break the zone, and you do that by hitting your outside shots. Now, they got, they got a little warmer as the second quarter went on, but for most of the game, let's face it, their outside shot has been a struggle so far. Well, the outside shot's going to be for that hat right there. <laughs> That you see in your picture, we're going to see who's going to get that tip of the hat and player of the game coming up. Second half, right around the corner. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we, 
believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. Just before the start of the third quarter at uh, Lou House, where the Olympians lead the Tartars 27 to 23. And here come the Tartars. That was about the history. <laughs> yeah. I thought maybe somebody locked the bathroom door. Or somebody put sauce on their tartars. <laughs> and made, made things a little slippery for them. There you go. Speaking of slippery, how are the Olympians going to slip away from these tartars? Well, that, that little four point spurt, courtesy of the technical foul, because Wilson was not in the book, in and the I official saw. book. And uh, so, boy, that was two free throws. Stepping to the line to knock down that technical was Davion Crowder. And then Darian Williams finished it off with a basket. So in 6.7 seconds, they took control of the first half. Or the end of the first half, let's say. Leading scorer, Mookie Carr, with seven points all in the first quarter for the Olympians. Three-point shot put up by Gonzalez. Won't go down. Rebound by Crowder in front of Wilson. How can you miss not putting him on? Now Compost gets it under to Odeonu. Count it. If it goes, it didn't go. But Odeonu will go to the line for two. And, and Wilson was in the vicinity. That foul, boy, we couldn't see. Mechanic, there. let's see if we can guess here, yeah, man. We got a couple of folks that could have gone against. Foul was on number 14. He has three now as the first one is missed by Odeone. And out of the ball game goes Kosho Modonlu. In is Gonzalez. As Odeone misses, Jackson with the rebound. Jackson driving the lane and has it blocked once, twice, and Mookie's going to get nailed for the foul. A lot of contact on Jackson underneath, and you're right, the official Eric McNeil signals that that fouls against uh, Mookie Blayock. Mookie Blayock. He did <laughs> it again. I did it again. Jackson coming to the line and sinks the first one, his first foul shot. Actually, that's his first point since the first quarter with us. And Coach Otaki was telling us he's their best athlete and normally their leading scorer. Rebound to Odeonu, gives it to Campos, running the point guard, getting the start here in the third quarter, just as he did in the first. Crowder looking for somebody to pass to. And wow. Williams let it go, thought Campos was going to be there, and then Campos did a down and out. Yeah. So that's up. been happening Nobody's a lot. Here. <laughs> right. Three-point shots and air ball by Kaltoff, and the rebound's taken by Odeonu. And Odeonu wisely decides to give the ball up to a ball handler. Big strength move by Odeonu, and Crowder, yeah. somehow the ball didn't go down for him. Rebound is off to Kaltoff. Well, he attacked well, so that's for sure, though. Showed, showed no fear of the big man standing in the post for for the Totters. Mejia with a quick three, won't go down, rebound. This to Jackson, Whoa. he yeah. had an elbow on yeah. Campos. Playing with the big boys down exactly. here. But that's his job, to be a bug. Right. But so. you don't want to be a bug with a busted nose. <laughs> Unless it's the championship game. <laughs> Odeonu. To Carr, now to Campos. Williams against Jackson. Odeonu on the baseline. Wow. Tried to do the reverse slam and it wouldn't go down for him. And that's a whole lot at any level to do that. Basket put up and in on the other end by Kalkov. That's a one point ball game. Crowder with it. Gets it back for three, won't go. Rebound by Odeonu. Now he puts it in. And he was determined to make the slam dunk here. 
by my count, that's his first points of the game. Yes, it is. He's missed two slams. And the ball is knocked out of bounds. It should be Tartar ball. 28 seconds left on the shot clock. Now you look at the Tartar schedule, not too many big name teams on the preseason schedule. Ball is now in the hands of Devin Kaltoff. One of them is Westchester in a big loss, 65 to 36. Carson and Banning, both, well, actually, they beat Banning. They're down a little bit. Carson, they beat them by two points. And Miracosta, they lost by one point. The ball is turned over. So they can't hang tough. Williams from the baseline won't rebound, goes to Odionu. Sure. And did he shuffle the feet? He sure did. Yeah, and you right. can credit Wilson with that turnover. Because he was just in the way. He was just in the way. It's all you want. You see the big kid right there. But if they can get that kid to do some road work and get in the gym, look out. Absolutely. Lot of potential. Mejia for the three. No rebound, though. Offensive rebound. Two offensive rebounds there, Rufus. That one taken by Gonzalez. And that normally leads to buckets, and you got a carry in this time against Kalkoff. Kayvon Fair coming in for Dev Davion Crowder. So again, the, the Tartars are really winning the battle on the board, it seems like, here in the second half. They win the battle on the boards, but they've given a couple of turnovers that have allowed Luzman to maintain uh, their lead. Fair with a little runner that wouldn't go in. Jackson with the rebound for the Tartars. So no second look again for the Olympians. Jackson. Uh, this Jackson is a good looking ball handler. Mejia is a quick guy. Now Wilson has it. No, the rebound is tipped away by Gonzalez and saved by Mejia. Kaltoff puts it into fourth gear, but the ball is blocked and out of bounds. It goes. Williams blocked the ball. 27 seconds left on Torrance's shot clock. And the officials let them play a little bit, and Torrance's coach, Nitake, decides to take a, a full timeout here on City TV. Looks like while we got a timeout coming, we got Sebastian Cut Spencer. Thanks a lot, guys. The Tartar starting guard, Giovanni Jackson, is no friendly opponent for the Luzinger Olympians. He played against them last year, transferring from West Torrance, came to this school to get a better team, better playmaking ability for himself as well. He said he just wanted to come to a school where he knew where he could be a force at. He was pretty much a force last year too playing for West Torrance, scoring 20 plus on losing her last year, but it seems that he's happy over there at Torrance, and we'll see what he go, what he does in the fourth quarter. Back to you. All right, thank you, Sebastian. As the head coach, Paul, and assistant Mark Nitaki are graduates, alumnus, alumni of West High School. Paul went to UCLI, Mar or UCI. Mark went to UCLA. And talk to Mark Davis, who's wearing the Tartar maroon shirt, you see Ali Pravaz. I asked him, I said, what's it like, how often do you bite your tongue when you're working for your son? And he says, all the time. <laughs> you just want to be there for a little inspiration and score in the basket number 35, Evan Mejia. And that was a good looking bucket. And that gets it within one. So right off the inbound pass, Odionu lost the ball. Wanted to go up again for a high percentage shot. Williams and Jackson have been battling all night long. And now Jackson gets called for the block when Williams gave the hip check. They have been jousting all night long. It's been fun to watch. There you see the elbow. Yeah. But Jackson gets called for the block. And that's one of those that, that's another one of those calls that could have gone either way. 
So that's the third team foul on the Tartars. One for the Olympians with 3.20 left to go in the third quarter. Skipped over to Compost. Still lots of time on the shot clock and once again a turnover. Not sure what they're trying to accomplish and Compost will be coming out of the game for Sean Temple. Just a bad pass. Eric knows it. But, and the coach's question is, what's the objective on, on that particular pass? I mean. And that slam you heard was Compost hitting the chair. As making another bucket is Kosha Modenlu. He has 10, and they get the lead back. So a mini 4 0 run for the Tartars. Gets them back in, and it's a backcourt violation. Another bad pass. Ten turnovers by my count. Yeah, you see it. Williams just could. Just a little bit too far. So this is one of those instances where the Olympians have to find their focus. Exactly. And a 27-23 and lead at halftime has evaporated into a 30 to 29 deficit here with 237 left in the third quarter. Now Nathaniel Vaughn with his first personal, second team foul. Ball will be inbounded. Nice turnaround and put up and in by Modenlu. He has a dozen. 6-0 run by the Tartars. Wow. A lot of stuff going on here. Kate off with the second personal, fourth team foul. So yeah, Williams just ran right into the teeth of that zone defense. Was lucky that he got called for the foul and didn't turn it over. Temple gets it out to Fair. Fair off the glass, no. Rebound was taken by Mejia with 2.10 left to go in the third quarter. And a three-point lead for the Tartars. So Jackson will slow it down. Man defense shown by losing it. Shoveled over to Gonzalez and he puts it up and in. And this is an 11 to 2 run. And if you ask me, losing it is pretty close to needing a timeout. And now the ball is taken away from Mookie Carr as he fell down and a timeout, 30 second timeout called by Ali Parvaz. With 1.46 left to go in the third quarter. And who'd you credit that last basket by Torrance to? To number 14, Kosha okay. Modenlu. So let's go to Karen. Boom, Rufus. In the last time out that Coach Paul Nataki called, he pulled his team over and reminded them of how to open up lanes for shooting. He has lots of guys that can make the shot. They're just having a problem creating it. So he reminded them of what to do if they get stuck in coverage and how to get around it and how to score more points to get back in this game. Back to you. Thanks, Karen. And this Torrance team, they traveled a lot of people here tonight. The entire Spirit Squad sitting in the corner and a lot of moms and dads. It's good Absolutely. to see. A lot Huge of spirit squad. Yeah. I don't know if they can be as loud as losing yours, but 140 left to go in the third quarter. Turn around jumper and drive. Vaughn won't go down. Rebound is off to Jackson of Torrance. They're on the back dribble, but Crowder is still with him. Wow. And and that's going to be ball huge. Foul it's going to be an offensive foul against Jackson. That's going to be his fourth with 125 left here. So he'll come off and come in to replace him is Kyle Polk, a senior. One of the three seniors on this roster. That's it. One sophomore and the rest are juniors. Williams trying to get rid of Kaltoff gets it back out to Vaughn, but a lot of hands up in the air by Torrance, and now Mookie Carr fouls Mejia. And that was a frustration foul for Mookie. 
Unfortunately, only his second and only the third team foul. With 105 left in the third, and the Tartans have the ball and a five-point lead. And with Jackson, their key guy out, they're wanting to nurse this lead and try not to give up any ground. Well, that's one way to do it right there. Just give it off to Gonzalez, who now has four points. 45 seconds left in the third quarter, and a seven-point lead for the Tartars. Williams has it, being guarded by Kaltoff. Crowder with it. 18 seconds on the shot clock. Crowder has to pass it back out as he was blocked by Gonzalez. Williams with it, trying to penetrate this defense. Gets it to Temple for three. He rolls it in. His second three of the night, Rufus. He has a half dozen, and that saves the losing or bacon here for a minute with 10 seconds left. Modenlu, wow, gets it to go in. He has 14. And they turn the ball over, and this shot won't count anyway. 11 turnovers on the game for the Olympians, and Kosha Modenlu has something to clap about because they have a six-point lead. A six-point lead at 38-32. And now we've got Karen Bright with the hit. Lou Rufus, Devin Newton may be on the sideline, but he's had a basketball in hand since he walked into this gym. Now from afar, he's all smiles and good spirits, but I talked to his dad at halftime and he says this injury is really tough for him, saying it's one of the hardest things he's ever been through and it's, he's having a hard time sitting out and not running around with the rest of his squad. Devin is scheduled for an MRI tomorrow and if everything goes well, he should be back for the playoffs. Back to you. Now that's what uh, Coach Provaz is hoping for, and uh, initial diagnosis without pre-MRI diagnosis was a sprained MCL in his left knee. So let's hope that's all it is. Or maybe not even that. Just a big yeah. owie. How about that? Can we settle? Exactly. Is, that, is that a medical term, a big owie? Uh, it, it, it can be, and boy, if that's what it is, it'd be an accepted one. Well, a big owie for the... Uh, Olympians as they only score five points in the third quarter, Rufus. They were outscored 15 to five. Wow, and that yes. was a tough quarter for them. So they were completely outplayed. 94 feet worth. Williams with it, bad pass is turned over again. This defense has been really tough on them. And the shot by Modenlu, that one wouldn't go down for some reason. He hasn't missed anything. And again, turnovers, no turnovers. Temple, that shot, three-pointer almost went down. And again, here comes Modenlu, and he lays it in. Just like a walk in the park there. Pass underneath, pass back out. And a three-pointer won't go down. Rebound again to Mejia. Overly reliant on the shot from distance, Lou, and it just has not been there for him tonight. You know, we saw a couple of flashes, but it has not been there on any type of consistent basis. Mejia almost lost the ball. Now Kaltoff has it. A quick defense, and now a timeout is called. A 30 second timeout is called by head coach Paul Nataki. As the shot clock was down to eight, and they still had not gotten into their offensive set. He recognized, boy, I don't want to lose this possession without a good look at the basket. I'm up by eight. Um, a basket here could put him up 10 or 11, which would really put the Losing the Olympians behind the eight ball. It sure could. Just slipping away slowly by, for Losinger. They need to stop. They need to penetrate that quick hands up defense by the Charters and get second chances. Well, I think what in, in between that and they've got to get Odeone back on the floor. And there are three big guys. That's Darren Williams, Mookie Carr and Christian Odeonu, 
have got to control the action, the offensive action in the paint. Mejia has a shot blocked by Godslaw, who's played really well the past few games we've seen him, Rufus. has gotten better every game. 6.30 left to go in the fourth quarter. Now Odeon is there, puts up the shot, and it won't go down. Maybe he's trying to do a little bit too much with those shots. Well, it was that one was a pretty good look, Lou. It was a little too far out. Um, but, but I thought it was the right idea to attack the basket, which is what we're calling for. And we'll see in these last six minutes, trailing by eight, if they're able to do more of that. Gonzalez gets it to Mejia. Kaltov against Williams. Ball is tipped by Odeonu. Just Here comes in. Christian! He has four points. And Mookie Carr with just two fouls has not scored again, has not scored since the first quarter. And losing it now with a man-to-man -man defense. A lot of contact inside, no call. Spread the floor. Odeonu, a little bit more control there, Rufus. Has a half a dozen. Trails by four. Oh, inadvertent trip by Crowder. As Mejia hits the deck. So Davion with his first personal, just the fourth team foul. And in the ball game, here comes Jackson again. Also, here comes Parada. Oops. Yeah. And sometimes you take the low foul scoring as, as a good a, a, a foul committed as a good sign except here I think perhaps it's not as good a sign for the Olympians as we might think simply because it shows that they haven't been maybe as aggressive as they should be defensively good point Crowder has it Carr and Odeonu and Williams all in the game at the same time you got to go back inside that that's what you want to do Free up your big man to get inside. That shot put up for the end goal. I call for the inside. They say no rules if we going outside as Godstall drops down a three-pointer. Makes it a 39-40 game. Long three-pointer will go down for Parada, and Williams gets the rebound. Losinger's on a 7-0 run. Godslaw's been making things happen, Rufus, our past two TV games. Williams back to Peter. Wow. Drives in and throws the ball away. Nope. Odeonu saves the bacon. Eight points, and they get the lead back at the 421 mark. And Odeonu with six here in the fourth. After having a scoreless first half. Jackson slowing things down. Now where he goes. And Odeonu is going to get called for the foul. So it'll be a two shots for Giovanni Jackson. For Christian, that's his second, 15 foul. Jackson at the line to shoot a pair. This is the first. Back in the ball game is Kosha Modenlu. Jackson makes the second. And he has seven points. And with exactly four minutes left, we've got a tie ball game at 41. Odeonu has it. Gets around his defense, goes baseline and puts it up and in. Pretty play by the 6'4 senior. And a timeout by Paul Nataki with 343 left. And it's an 11 to 1 run. And since the 32nd timeout. And Nataki decides to change the third is is currently called 30 seconds to a full timeout. Wants a little more time to go through it with this team. At one point, Lou, they had a, 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 a commanding lead at 36 to uh, 29, and Losinger chipped away and chipped away. 38-32 at the end of the third, 
and now they're leading 43-41. So they're fighting back, and it's probably no coincidence that Mookie and Odeonu out there at the same time are making a difference. Also, Peter Go Godslaw is really, every time he's been in the game, he's made something happen. Right, and just as you mentioned, well, Godslaw has made some things happen. That's what guys are doing, this next man up. You know, if you want playing time, you got to do something positive when you're on the floor. Peter's a 5'11 senior. Doesn't get a whole lot of playing time. Averages about two and a half points a game. Giovanni Jackson gets it down low to Modenlu. Gets it back to Gio. Modenlu has a shot blocked by Odonu. Wow, that's and that intentional. Was a foul. It is an yep. intentional foul. Absolutely. It's going to be out of bounds right in front of you. Well, it'll be two shots and the ball is what it is on the intentional foul. There's the, the block. And here we'll see where the intentional occurs. Any grab of the jersey, typically speaking, particularly when uh, it's right in front of the official, is likely to draw you the intentional foul card. Odionu now has 11 points. And it's a three-point lead. The left-hander right down the middle now has a dozen. And again, this is one of those situations where losing or will get the ball after uh, the intentional foul, which is equivalent to a technical. It's two shots plus the ball. When they did that at the end of the first half, they picked up four points. Ooh. This time they don't convert turnover. That could have that could have been huge. Pass just a little bit too tall for Peter Godslaw with 3.15 left to go in the fourth quarter. And losing her continues to try to stop the Charters now from coming back. They only have one field goal in this quarter, Rufus. Rebound is off after the big three miss by Williams. Now Crowder gets around Modenlu. Ball is rolled around by Odeonu, and a timeout okay. called okay. by Ali Pervaz with 2.52 left in the fourth quarter. A full timeout, so two timeouts each left for each team. And a good timeout by Coach Pervaz. Boy, you talk about nursing a four-point lead, but this has been a very good quarter for the Olympians as they've outscored them by a margin of 13 to three here in the fourth with yeah. 252 left, as you said. And a 13 to one run since the 643 mark when a timeout was called. So good job by Lusinger to get back and surpass the Chardars, but they need uh, to get some insurance. They definitely do. I thought that for a moment there, they were uh, really on the ropes for a moment, but they weathered the storm, and now they're in control of the game with just under three minutes left. 12 points in the second half for Kristen Odeonu, 10 of them here in the fourth. You know, we got to come up with a law of our own. Ralph Lawler announcer. Long time, forever now, so the Clippers has a saying, first to 100 wins the game. It's the law. How about first to 50? <laughs> right. Lawler's law. And he wasn't, he's not wrong very often when you get to that. And a long two-pointer by Williams is too long, but Mookie saves the bacon. The shot clock doesn't reset because it didn't hit anything, so they've got to get into... Their and offense basket goes. Did it count? Yeah, it will count. Wow. One and one. Ali Pravaz wanted it to count. Let's watch it here, Rufus. Yeah. Is it Jackson or is it the the young man on the ground? Let's see. Is is that that's uh? Was that Pope? Parada. Okay. I believe that will be his first. Eighth team foul. So going to the line to shoot the one and one is Godslaw. 
And that was smart on Peter's effort there because he knew that he had to make something happen. Right. Show it. And Odionu is fouled by Jackson. The question is going to be who, who's it on. Wow. Let's see who they call it on. Well, they call it on number 12, because if it had been on Giovanni Jackson, that's, that would have been five. Right, that's, so that's on number 12, Devin Kaltoff. Going to the line to shoot the one and one is Audione. Misses, but the rebound. Wow. Slam home by Audione. 14 for Christian. And the shot is blocked by Williams and the shot by Mejia. And now the Olympians can try to eat some clock. Let's see if they do. With a seven point lead. Williams has it. And a blocking foul is gonna be called. So this is gonna be double bonus time now. And they give that foul to Evan Mejia and they say that's his second of the game. So it should be a timeout on the floor. Should be two shots in the double bonus. So you see Christian Odionu's slam dunk on the replay. You want to see it again? Hey, let's let's look at it again. Let's look at it again, yeah. Timeout on the floor with two minutes and one second left to go. Odionu, here we go. There's Mookie got the rebound off of the foul shot miss, and Odionu says, thanks, big fella. And that's, is that 12 in the quarter yes. or 14? Uh, that's 12 in the quarter, 14 total. Okay. I keep mine a little different than the officials. So after, after a scoreless first half and only a pair in the third, Odeona has exploded here in the fourth to be the difference maker. That's now, right. that's the kind of play that will get you an award of some sort. That's right, either POG or tip. <laughs> so going to the line to shoot two is Darian Williams. So they're in the double bonus. And now, Darian has seven points, his first point of the half. So Rufus's law could come into effect. Eh, nope, Odionu though gets the rebound. He's just been a monster here in the second half. God's law with it. And now under two minutes and an eight point lead, Luziger can afford to hold the ball and kill some time on the shot clock. Still 18 seconds left. No need to shoot early. That's one thing that's for sure. Williams has it. Williams with nine seconds on the shot clock. Won't go down. Rebound is tipped up, and Odeon is there again. Tamuki. No, but look out. He's okay. He just wanted to make that. Yeah. But it'll be two shots. The foul goes against Wilson, number 55. It's his first personal. First one they called on him. Hmm? The first one they called on him. <laughs> there is a difference. <laughs> right. Yes. I don't think that's his first foul tonight. Uh, <laughs> well, he's just been there. Yeah. He's kind of like Shaq when he get, used to get called for a foul. He was just there. So with 126 left to go in the game, I'm telling you, we gotta, gotta we gotta get one of those coupons to go to that yeah. store that sell the bedroom stuff and the bathroom yep. stuff and stuff beyond that. Yep. And get them a towel. Well, you know what? They got losing her towels right out there for sale. <laughs> well, Coach Pravaz and, and Schreier and, and Rhodes go out there and buy one. So Mookie at the line on the double bonus hits the first. And that's his first point since the first quarter, has eight points. And is this Rufus's law? Well, 
I got to tell you, boy, you almost have to think that it is here. And with them taking Wilson out, they're trying to go with a little more speed. Also, three-point shot of Mejia. Odionu almost got that rebound, but Jackson comes up with it. Doesn't want to foul him. Coming down to a minute 15. Modenlu on the baseline shot oh. blocked by Williams, but it's called goaltending. So Modenlu gets credited with the bucket. He has 18 on the night. And that snaps a huge run, Rufus. That's a, was that 18 to one run? Yeah. By my count, Lusinger put on an 18 to one run there. Between field goals by the Tartars. So the ball is out of bounds to Torrance. Parada with it. Gets it over to Modenlu. Misses the uh, shot. Rebound is off. That was a big miss. Godslaw. Sure was. Yes. Peter is fouled with 58 seconds left. You take your choice between number 12 and number 35. That's Kalthoff, but I see the five up there, so it looks like they gave it to Mejia. <laughs> so first one is not in by Peter, who's six out of nine, six out of 10 now. I think that's seven out of ten. That's five points. Jackson with it going in. Ooh. He and gets now slammed down. Hit Jackson for his fifth foul. No, he didn't get slammed down. They're saying that he pushed off on the way to the basket. Clear control. He won't shoot free throws, but that'll end the night for Jackson. With 52.9 seconds, here you go, and set up nicely was the losing your defender. A bit of frustration there by Jackson. So losing her after taking the third quarter off comes back with a big one. Trailing by five, 38 to 32. Smoky Carr comes out of the ball game. Odionu gets the inbound pass, and he's fouled mm -hmm. by Kosha Modenlu. That's, this should be his fifth. And that is. So the Losinger Olympians, their athleticism, that's what I would say, and that young man right there bailed him out tonight. Oh, he certainly did. Well, he came alive in the fourth quarter. And what a difference he made. 16 points for Christian. Check that, 50. Wow. Right down the middle. A 10-point lead, biggest lead of the night for either team. And look out. Here comes yeah. Godslaw. Look at oh. the play of it on oh. with the exclamation point. 18 points for the senior. Three point shot, yeah. and that's Barry. Number 13, Oscar Parada. That's his first bucket of the game. They kept the lid on him all night. Now, 18 seconds left to go, and the ball is stolen. Yeah by Polk. Woo. And Parada with a long two. And a timeout on the floor with six and a half left. Six and a half seconds and a seven point deficit. It'll be losing your ball if I'm not mistaken. So question is, is there a seven point play in the playbook of Coach Nataki and the Torrance Totters? 
because that's what their deficit is. That's what the time is you see on the clock. That's seconds, not minutes, six and a half seconds. And losing her with the opportunity to up their league lead record to six and one overall, 12 and six and one in league, 12 and one, 12 and 11 overall. And if their last loss was to Centennial before that, a non league game. To well, Diamond Ranch. Well, the Centennial loss is the one that will stick in their craw the longest. Because that was their first game when they had to make the adjustment of not having Devin Newton. And they really, really right. struggled in that game. Um, Centennial to their credit, and you got and you got to give Centennial a lot of credit. They knew that boy, it was that losing it was a wounded duck, and they took advantage of it. And they sure did. And well, let's face it, the Apaches were a hungry bunch. Indeed, they were, and they feasted on the Olympians and, and took away their opportunity for a perfect record in in, in league at the halfway point, but. Losinger has since bounced back, and I think we can safely put this game in the, in the W column with two consecutive wins after that disappointing loss right here at Lou House. That was the other element that was disappointing in it. It yep. was the opportunity to go 5-0 and in league, and you were on your home court. They're only 2-3 and three here at home. Old so. Davidson College played there for those that – and follow that, which which is permissible. Guy steps out of bounds, you pass the ball along the end line out of bounds. Out of bounds. Creates an opportunity for somebody open on the floor. Foul is on Kevin Gonzalez, his second. Williams. And I like how Williams has played tonight, Lou. He, he, you know, he, he, he made the adjustment in terms of the first time, and he admitted himself in the post-game interview that it was a bit much on him having to try to run the offense and play his game, but it seems like he's found the perfect combination of that, and that'll be the ball game. Sure is, Williams blocks the long shot attempt out of bounds to end the ball game. 55-48 is the final score. And except for that last little run put on by the Apaches, they scored 10 points. But an 18 to 1 run is what really spelled doom for Paul Nataki and the Tartars. But boy, they sure hung in tough. Maybe they got worn down a little bit by a well, the, it's the athletic more physical right. losing your Olympians. And uh, but I tell you, the that zone defense put on by the Tartars, as the Apaches did, gave the Olympians fits. The big difference between the Apache defense and the Tartar defense is the physicality and the length of the Apaches. Exactly. And and for the Olympians, though, a real good W for them. It looks like we got Karen Bright with Coach Nataki of the Torrance Tartars. Coach, it was a tough game. You guys really were dominant for most of the game, and then it seemed to all fall apart in the fourth quarter. What happened? Yeah, it was difficult. We got, our guys got in foul trouble, and uh, their uh, athleticism really wore us down. They got too many offense rebounds, tip jams, uh, really broke open the game a little bit. Um, and it hurt us when our two, two starting main pieces fouled out. Um, but, I mean, we had a good game plan. Guys executed pretty well. Just down the stretch, we couldn't put it together. Thanks, Coach. Thank you very much. And as All Coach right. said, you know, he had a couple of guys foul out, Jackson being one of them, and, of course, Modon Lou being the other. And with those two guys fouling out, that changed the complexion of the game for them. But as you also mentioned, losing your head, the big run in the fourth quarter after they trailed early. But they come back, they held their composure. That's what you want to see. That's what's key. They held their composure, got back in the game, took control of the game. And once again, the game turned on an intentional foul. We'll talk about that a little later. But right now, let's go over to Sebastian Spencer with Coach Ali Pravaz. Thanks a lot, guys. Coach P, you guys went into that fourth quarter down by eight points, end up winning 
by a nice amount. How do you feel about you guys playing in that fourth quarter? I, I thought we played poised. When we got down a little bit, I thought we played poised. Um, I was telling the boys we were getting good looks. We were getting good looks at the rim. We weren't converting. Um, you know, Christian did not have a good first three quarters for us, but he really played like a man in the fourth quarter. He really played like a man. And we kept telling him, be patient, go with the rim strong. You know, there's nobody in there that can stop you. And when he did what he could do, we saw how dangerous of a team we could be. But I uh, thought all the guys played well. I thought Darian did great for us on the defensive end, got some boards. Um, Peter came in off the bench, hit a big shot, made some big plays for us, and uh, made free throws down the stretch and got rebounds. But, I mean, Christian really was a man in the fourth period, and it, it was nice to see that tonight. Definitely evident that Christian was the man tonight. And also talk about your guard stepping up as well while Devin is out. You got a lot of guards on that bench over there from Sean Temple to Campos. And you got a lot of guys. Still Davion Crowder as well. Those guys stepping up. It, it's a committee. It's a committee. You know, Devin's played a lot of minutes for us before he got hurt. So guys got to step up and do it. Um, Eric comes in. Campos starts the game for us, gets us off to a good start. And then we bring in guys that, that can shoot the ball. Kayvon made some big shots for us in the first half. Sean made some shots for us. Um, and then I thought Peter did a great job finishing the game. And Davion, the whole game, just playing even keel, making good decisions, getting guys the ball. And uh, it was a complete team effort tonight. I was really proud of my guys. Definitely. So far in the Bay League, still best team in here. So what do you guys want to do going forward? We're just focused on South on Friday. That's it. We're just, we're just focused on South on Friday. One game at a time is what's gotten us here, and we're not going to deviate from that. South is a good team. Uh, we got them at their house, and they're hungry, and they want to come after us. So we're going to come to practice tomorrow. We're going to work. We're going to be ready for South on Friday. All right, Coach. Good game. And guys, we got Christian stepping in here as well. How do you feel about the game tonight? You guys got that win. You pretty much put the team on your back in that fourth quarter. How does it feel to get that win? Uh, it felt real good to get the win. Um, we just, we've just been winning games. Um, Devin's, um, Devin like fell off. He got injured, so we just had to all step up. And we just played hard. I tried to, um, my teammates just passed me the ball. We played defense together. We're just the team. And then in the fourth quarter, we was down. I just tried to play my hardest. Everyone else played hard, too. I just tried to create some energy. And we make one on the run, trying to win the rest of our games. And you guys, you can tell, everybody can tell, you guys like playing with each other. How's the practices go with you guys? Are they competitive? You guys challenging each other every day? How does that go? Oh, yeah, real competitive. We make everybody better. Everybody on our team, we always go hard every practice. After practice, we're best friends. But in practice, sometimes we get into it. We're just trying to get better. Everyone's just trying to make everyone better. And that's just the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. I think everybody at home wants to know, man, where, where'd you get that bounce, man? You got, you got springs in your shoes or something, man? Oh, man, I'm, I grew up in Al Alabama. So, I mean, I guess I just, I don't know. Just been <laughs> eating a lot of chicken, man. That's it. <laughs> it's in the blood, huh? Yeah. Good game for you, man. There you go, guys. Player of the game. Back to you guys. Well, so says him. So when, when did he go? Exactly. Who made he him He didn't even king? get a vote. He, would, he didn't even get here on time. <laughs> anyway, it, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Thanks. Oh, let's, let's go back out to front court here. All right. You were battling the flu last week. It looks like you're feeling a lot better. How are you feeling tonight? Uh, I'm feeling real good. Um, I'm happy my team came out with the W and we all played hard and talked on defense. Now, it seemed like you guys were kind of on cruise control those first three quarters and then someone turned on the on switch and you guys just blew this game open. What changed? Well, basically, Coach Ali, he told us we got to not light up and keep going because last time we only won by one, so we had to keep the pressure on and everybody had to talk on defense. And for you, what's it like missing Devin Newton right now? Oh, it's real bad because he's like a, he's a big part of our offense, but when we missing players, we just tell each other to step up. We all got to work a little bit harder. Well, it seemed to work for you well tonight. Yeah. Guys, we'll put the rope back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Karen. Now, doesn't it always seem, Rufus, that the tough guys always have the small voices? Yep. But he's a, you mean a like good Mike kid. Tyson? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a really <laughs> tough guy now. Yeah, that's <laughs> but, right. But <laughs> nah, but uh, now, David. I, I mean, let's let, let's face it. We got to acknowledge that Davion is the defending tip of the hat award winner, at least while I was here. Now I understand That's it was right. somebody else the other night, but over here at losing your since we were last here, Davion's the defending well, we, guy. we had trouble coming up with that too. <laughs> so we were in Hawthorne, so we came up with a Hawthorne baseball cap. <laughs> it was either that or my jungle hat. So, <clears throat> so anyway, we're going to have to go over that. And uh, why don't we chew on that yeah. and uh, also go over the scoring when we come back? And who knows? Maybe a cut and Karen have something else in mind. We'll be back after this. Hi, 
I'm Donnell Beverly from the University of Connecticut, home of the 2011 National Championship UConn Huskies basketball team, and you're losing your Olympians. Beverly around the back, follow a jumper, good, beautiful shot. It wasn't too long ago that I was playing basketball right here. I just want to thank him for having me here. I'm, I'm honored to play here. And the Huskies are the top dog in 2011. Winning the NCAA championship has always been a goal of mine, but so is getting a great education that will last me a lifetime. You can achieve your goals too. All you have to do is work hard and dream hard, and you can do anything you put your mind to. Back at Lou House, where Lusinger goes to 6-1 and one in the Pioneer League, and they defeat Torrance 55-48 to in a huge fourth quarter as the, the Olympians came out in the, in the second half of the third quarter, only scoring five points, ring up 23 points in the fourth quarter. So hats off to them. And uh, let's go over some scoring for the Tartars as they fall to 10 and 13 overall and three and four in the Pioneer League. Also playing tonight in the league, South was playing at Centennial and North was playing at West. And so those are two big games in the Pioneer League as well, especially with South at four and two. But it doesn't matter right. because now, even if they win, there's still a game behind the, uh, the losing girl Olympians. So for Torrance, it was Giovanni Jackson with seven points. He fouled out with just under 53 seconds left. Six points for Devin Kaltoff and uh, five points for Oscar Parada. 18 points for Kusha Modenlu. He fouled out with just under 51 seconds left. Three points for Kyle Polk. Three for Evan Mejia. Four for Kevin Gonzalez. And two for Thomas Wilson, the mystery man who <laughs> cost his team two points. So he didn't cost him. Right. Somebody, uh, one of the coaching staff, didn't put him in there in the official scorebook. Three points for Davion Crowder for the Olympians, who improved to 12 and 11, and also six and one in the Pioneer League. Seven points for Darian Williams, six for Kayvon Fair, who had two three-pointers, big three-pointers in the second quarter, and uh, nothing after that. Five points for Peter Godslaw, 18 points for Kristen Odionu, who was just a monster in the second half especially the fourth quarter. 16 of those 18 were scored in the fourth. Two points for Nathaniel Vaughn, who I thought played good in limited minutes. And Sean Temple with two big three-pointers when the losing two, Olympians needed them. Two huge threes. Mm -hmm. And eight points for Mookie Carr. And uh, good to see him uh, getting some color back. He's looking a little green there the past couple of weeks. <laughs> But it was a great team effort, and, and I think the story of this game ultimately will be the contributions that were made by everybody. As you mentioned, I mean, guys come in, they hit one or two shots, but they were all critical shots right. uh, as Torrance really, you know, stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with this losing her team for a long while before they finally gave in. But as they were standing toe to toe, just like you mentioned, guys like Kayvon Fair um, with a couple of threes, uh, Darian Williams, Sean Temple, again, yeah. two huge threes. So that was, you know, that, that to me, that's the story of the game, that kind of effort, coupled with, of course, the explosion in the fourth quarter by Odeonu. Not only on the scoreboard, Rufus, but on the rebounding. He gave the, the Olympians a lot of second chances, which Certainly they weren't did. getting in the third quarter. So he really stepped up. And speaking of that, it's time for our player of the game and our tip of the hat award and let's go to our player of the game I don't think there's any doubt in anybody's mind who, t who put this team on its back and the one thing I like about let's, let's call it Kristen Odeonu number 21 is our channel uh, 31 7 uh, city TV player of the game is Kristen Odeonu and uh, I liked what he said in the interview right he said it was my team like, I don't know if it was inadvertent or not, but he said, my team got me the ball. And uh, I really like that because now, being a transfer, he's really getting comfortable uh, when the Olympians need it, scoring 18 points, and I'm sure was in double figures for rebounds. Oh, absolutely. I mean, ju just a real beast on the inside. Uh, and that's where the difference also in the game came. Some of the threes opened up the floor a little bit, and what that does 
is that it extends the zone, stretches the zone out, and that gives guys like Odeonu and even Mookie Carr an opportunity then to operate inside, which is where their strength is. And our tip of the hat player of the game is none other than... Our tip of the hat tonight goes to a guy who we talked about, these guys coming in, making contributions, taking advantage of the opportunities that's been presented to them. And he's made contributions the last couple of games. Tip of the hat tonight goes to Pete, number 13, Peter Gottslaw. Hey, Peter, congratulations to you. This is a Bailey Tino. The color is known as putty. Yeah, some of you less sophisticated would say brown. Yeah, I'd but, say, I was going to say you know, beige. <laughs> but it's but not beige. putty is the color. <laughs> you know, and, and you're right. I was asked earlier, and, and they're letting us know, and we can spread the word, that no, you don't get to keep the hat or get the hat. You get a tip of the hat, okay? <laughs> so you take your tip, enjoy it as a memory, all right? But no, I don't give you the hat. <laughs> But anyway, congratulations to chip. Peter. I like these guys, though, who, 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 who are role players who come in, though, and make contributions. And that's what the entire role players for the Olympians did tonight. But they were led by Peter Godslaw. So congratulations, Peter. That's right. See, it's a bigger deal than the player of the game, I'm telling you. All right, Rufus, it's uh, that time. Let's put this, uh, put a bow on this one and this put it up in the wind. In the wind. Shelf there, okay, for the losing your Olympians. And once again, this is Lou Stowers for Rufus Washington, Karen Bright, Cut Spencer, and the three-time star winning City TV crew led by Tom Strickfad. And once again, the final score from Lou House, the Olympians, 55 to 48 over the Torrance Tartars. Until next time, so long.